Welcome to our lecture online. The next problem asks us to find the buoyancy force on an object inside a tank full of water. So this is water. And in this case, the tank in the water is also accelerating downward at acceleration equal to A, where A is less than G. Just kind of like we saw in the previous example where we found the pressure inside the tank when the tank was accelerating downward. But in this case, we need to find the buoyancy force on an object. Notice the object has a flat surface at the top and the bottom with an area equal to A, and the height of the object is equal to H. And notice that the top of the object is a distance Y below the surface. So how do we calculate the buoyancy force? Well, we realize that there's going to be a force pushing down at the top due to the weight of the water above it. And in this case, since it's accelerating downward, it's going to be the apparent weight of the water above the object. So we have a force at the top, and then we have a force at the bottom. Now the force at the bottom will be greater than the force at the top because it's deeper into the liquid or the pressure is greater. Remember, a force on the surface below, uh, on the surface of an object, below the surface of the water, we know that pressure is equal to force divided by area, so force is equal to pressure times area, and so therefore when you're deeper into the liquid, the pressure will be greater, and therefore the force will be greater. And so by definition, the buoyancy force, we'll write it as BF, is equal to the difference between the force at the bottom minus the force at the top, assuming that the force at the top is going to be smaller than the force at the bottom. Now the force is going to be pressure times area, so in this case that's going to be the pressure at the bottom times the area minus the pressure at the top times the area. Now what did we learn in the previous video about the pressure inside a tank that's accelerating downward? We learned that the pressure is going to be equal to the density of the liquid times the acceleration due to gravity minus the acceleration of the tank, g minus a, rho g, and then the depth y in the tank. So we knew that that was going to be the pressure inside the tank that's accelerating downward. So we can then say that the buoyancy force is equal to the pressure at the bottom, which is going to be rho times g minus a, and the depth in the tank is going to be y plus h, where, depth, where h further down at the bottom than we are at the top of the object. We and the, so that would be pressure, uh, and then we have to multiply that times area. So the pressure at the bottom is rho times g minus a times y plus h times the area, minus the pressure at the top, which would be equal to the density times g minus a, but in this case it's only going to be y instead of y plus h, times the area. Okay, so now what we can do is we can multiply that out somewhat and see what we get. We get the buoyancy force is equal to, we're going to keep this together, so we're going to write this as rho times g minus a times y times a plus rho times g minus a times h times a, so what we've done is we simply separated the y plus h we have the y here, we have the h there, and then we have the last term there, which is minus rho times g minus a times y times a. Now notice that the first term and the last term are exactly the same. We can cancel those out. So this term, positive, this term, negative, cancel each other out, which means that the buoyancy force, and let's continue over here, that means that the buoyancy force is equal to what's left over, so in this case it's going to be the density times g minus a times h times, times the cross-sectional area. But now we realize that h times a is simply the volume of the object, so bf, the buoyancy force, is equal to the density of the liquid times g minus a times the volume of the object which, by the way, is also the volume of the displaced liquid. So we can say that the buoyancy force is equal to the density times g minus a times the volume of the displaced liquid. And then the only difference between the buoyancy force inside a tank that's stationary versus the buoyancy force inside a tank that's 
accelerating downward acceleration A is that we have G minus A instead of simply just G for a stationary tank. And so we have the same adjustment to the buoyancy force as we did to the pressure inside the tank because after all the buoyancy force is completely dependent upon the pressure so it's no wonder we get the same G minus A term in there or not term but G minus A factor in there that determines the buoyancy force in the accelerating tank and that is how it's done.